Hello, and welcome to The Reluctant Chef. My name is Bob. Today, we're going to scramble eggs, a very straightforward dish, which can, in fact, be quite simple or quite glamorous and, and complicated. In the words of James Beard, the great American cookbook writer and food critic, who said, I have had in my time memorable meals of scrambled eggs with fresh truffles, scrambled eggs with caviar and other glamorous things. But to me, there are few things as magnificent as scrambled eggs, pure and simple, perfectly cooked, and perfectly seasoned. I'm going to serve the eggs on toasted, unbuttered English muffins. In addition to the English muffin, all we're gonna need is a nonstick frying pan, spatula to stir them in the pan with, mixing bowl to whip up the eggs in, uh, just a couple drops of water. Now I'm serious when I say a couple drops. The smallest amount is all you need to help your eggs come out fluffy too much and you just you end up having to cook them too long and they can end up being a little tough. And uh, about a half tablespoon of butter. And of course, our eggs. Uh, this is a process referred to as mise en place, which is French for get your stuff together before you start cooking. This can make a big difference. It, it, it helps the process go more smoothly. It gives you an opportunity to course correct if you need to. Um, if there's an ingredient that you need and you're absolutely sure that you have it in the cupboard, but you don't, at least you've got an opportunity to, to fix it up. One way is uh, if, if you have if cookbooks, you look in your cookbooks, there's usually a section on substitutions and you can look down the left hand side and you can find the ingredient that you need and to the right of it it will indicate some substitution you can use. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the butter in the pan and we're just going to put a very low flame under it. Not only do we want to melt the butter but we also want the pan to completely warm. Uh, it's also going to make it possible to step away for a minute without worrying about the butter burning. Because butter burns, we have to start all over again. Now, we're going to get the eggs ready. Crack the eggs, put them in the mixing bowl. Now, you know that the reluctant chef does not like to mess things up unnecessarily. But, in this case, I am messing up a, a mixing bowl. And the reason for that is because I want to mix up the eggs a little bit before pouring them into the pan. All I'm gonna do here is break up the yolks and stir it ever so slightly just to start getting it mixed up together. But you know, you'd, you'd think that if you took a whisk and you whipped them up until they were really frothy, you would, you would think it would work better, but my experience is that's not true. Uh, then in fact, you end up with, with, with less fluffy eggs that way. Don't know why, but that's, that's the way it works. Pour in our couple drops of water. Remember, just go very easy on the water. All right, now, before you put the egg in the pan, what you want to do is keep an eye on the butter because the, the way the butter's acting is going to tell you when your pan is hot enough. If you can see, there are very fine bubbles forming in the butter. Uh, it, it's not yet uh, burning and turning brown, but we've got our little bubbles, and that way we know that it's time to pour in the egg. Now, we're just going to leave them alone for about a minute, just to start cooking very slowly. Let's see how our heat is. Maybe we we'll just turn it up a little bit, but it's still still a low flame because we want it to cook slowly. You can see that we've already got some cooked egg around the perimeter, so it's time to start stirring. And notice again, we're stirring very slowly, very slowly. We're not gonna, not gonna beat him to death. And I think we're actually a little too hot here. We're gonna turn that heat down. Because again, we, they cook quickly enough at best, and we certainly don't want them to cook too quickly. There we go. Now, this is the point at which, if you're gonna add something to your scrambled eggs, whether it's that caviar that we talked about a minute ago, or some chopped ham, or uh, maybe some herbs, uh, anything like that, this is the point at which you want to add it. Because uh, you're not cooking those things that you're adding, uh, you're just warming them with the eggs. Now, we've got to stop right here, 
because they're almost but not quite done and we want to remove them from the heat. And the reason for that is that they will keep cooking after we've taken them off the burner. So we want to get them off the burner, keep moving them around, and there we have it. That quick and easy, and they are perfectly done. Let's see. Yes, nice and brown and kind of crispy, which works really well as, as a bed for, for the eggs. So we will just turn our eggs out on the muffins or, you know, toast if that's what you're using, or just, like I said, just on the plate by themselves. Whatever works for you. Now, we talked about all kinds of uh, interesting additions that we can make to these. Myself, just a little bit of ground pepper is really the perfect seasoning for me. I remember my mother used to uh, slice up a leftover hot dog or something and, and add them to the, the, the scrambled eggs, which I, I enjoyed a lot as a kid. Uh, but if you just a ham, a bit of hot dog, whatever, if it's meat, be sure it's already cooked because as you saw, it all moves very quickly and there's certainly not time for the meat to actually cook once you've added it to the eggs. One other thing before you go, before you go, and, it, and it's scrambled egg related, Eleanor Roosevelt is one of my very favorite historical figures. I know based on the many biographies that I have read that it's pretty likely she was a reluctant chef too. There's one uh, very interesting and related tidbit in one of my favorite uh, Eleanor Roosevelt biography is this one by Professor Blanche Weizen Cook, uh, who tells about during the Roosevelt uh, administration, it was common for the president to surround himself on a Sunday evening with advisors and different friends. And Eleanor would pull out her favorite chafing dish and scramble up a mess of eggs to feed people. These gatherings were referred to as brains and eggs. Anyway, with that thought, I leave you with my best wishes.